Good morning. It is the 4th of July weekend, Independence Day weekend. This week, I've published an, e an email, uh, a blog on continuing the call. I've also published this this Friday, today, a blog essay entitled, Who is in Your Boat? It's kind of an odd title. In my mind's eye, I see a beautiful photograph of a canoe drifting on a big lake. In the distance, I see this lake stretching out to mountains, mountainscapes that reach into the sky like the Rocky Mountains of Montana. Tomorrow I head to Montana with my wife to see our sons and wives and three grandsons. We don't get to see them very often, but Montana is where our son's spouses uh, grew up. And so they return and we return to this beautiful land of big sky country where the Missouri River flows through it. We'll be taking a float trip down the Missouri River, fishing for rainbows and brown trout, brook trout. They're incredible fish, up to four, five, six, eight pounds even, that hit on tiny flies. It's clear water and they can see you easily, so it's very tricky fishing. As we float down the boat, we'll have our family in it. We might have two boats, a raft. We'll be swimming. It'll be a marvelous time. It'll be a joyful time in our boat. But I'm speaking about something more than that today. Who is in your boat? Back in the, the disciples' time, in the Gospel of John particularly, we see stories, actually three stories of the disciples being in the boat. One time, Jesus walked on the water to them as if like a ghost, they were terrified. Another time, Jesus came and, and Peter got out of the boat and because Jesus motioned to him, come, come, walk. And Peter could walk until he took his eyes off Jesus and looked at the waves. And then he began to sink, sink into the water and said, save me. That's an important thing to say, save me. And Jesus reached out his hand and drew him in and back to the boat. Another time, the Sea of Genesaret, Galilee, they were fishing. Jesus was in the boat. He was asleep and a huge storm came up. Of course, Jesus, God, knew about it. They woke him up, saying, don't you care that we die? Jesus said, you of little faith, reached out his hand, and the seas calmed. They were amazed, this miraculous power, that he could calm the seas. He had control over nature. He had created nature. He had created the world and everything in it. He created us. And he wants us to know that he is the one who created us. He is the one who saves us from ourselves and our sin because we are not capable of doing it. We need him. We need him in our boat. Our boat is our life. We travel in boats, but our boat is our lives. You have holes in your boat? I remember a rowboat we had and the rivets would pop out or leak and we'd, I'd tar it or epoxy it to try to keep the water from coming in and that would work for a little while and eventually it would leak again. We've had canvas canoes that would crack and dry and leak. 
We've had rubber rafts <laughs> that could easily be punctured and leaked often. In fact, over time, you know, we'd store them where mice, squirrels could get in, and of course they were destroyed. Boats. We've had bigger boats. We've had fishing boats up to 24 feet for fishing. One was called the Kingfisher. Like the Kingfisher, it went out and we caught a lot of fish. It didn't leak often except for a hole in the bottom to let out water. Sometimes water would come in through that and we'd have to use a pump to try to get it out or get it up on shore quickly where we could let the water drain out. You hear of catastrophes at sea and I think of yes, the SS Edmund Fitzgerald that crashed off of Whitefish Point in an incredible storm in one November 1975 off Whitefish Point all crew on hand on deck died, perished. The water's always cold. The waves can be over 20 feet high. Yes, nature can be brutal. Nature can be beautiful, like the flowering crab trees that are out. And the this week, the linden trees and their little white blossoms that have a sweet perfume that's almost too great for some. I know of two doctors. I don't know why doctors. They just happened to be the one that had linden trees and they sawed them down. It was too much for them. Huh, not for me. I can't get enough of that incredible smell that the linden trees, the basswood trees, locust trees have those smells. They're incredible and many perfumes have been made from those beautiful blossoms and the oil that comes from it. But I'm talking about God, the one who created it all, the one whom you need in your boat, the one whom you need to save you, the one whom you need to reach out your hand to so that you may be saved and reach out your heart and say, I need you because I can't do it. I am a sinful person. I confess my sin. I repent of what I've done. I want to turn around and I need your help. I need your forgiveness. I need your grace. I need your redemption. I need your love spilled on the cross for us, that we might live in resurrection like him and be able to travel in a boat filled with Jesus Christ, his Holy Spirit, and his love for us. This 4th of July, let's have independence, not brought from the, out, not from the outside, but from the inside and sin that will help us, those things from the outside. Amen.